Hello and welcome back to another build video. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the DLC weapons. We're going to be looking at the Blood Fiend's arm. This is a unique colossal weapon with an R2 that has a bullet attached to it. And this bullet actually does full status damage. And the interesting thing is about the Blood Fiend's arm is that it scales very well with Arcane even on a blood infusion. That might not sound very significant, but you can get 203 bleed at 47 arcane, which is just past the arcane soft cap. Now that's a lot, right? That's more than the scavenger's curved sword can build up in a single attack. That's almost as high as something like Varys Bouquet, which was the highest bleed weapon in the game until the Blood Fiend's arm. So as I mentioned earlier, the Blood Fiend's arm has a bullet that has full status motion value. And so if you do an R2, the bullet will hit along with the R2, meaning that your status damage will be doubled for that attack, assuming both attacks land. So you'd be doing around 400 bleed damage a hit. Now to capitalize off the R2s that we're doing, I decided to spec into a charged attack build. Now you don't have to do that and Perhaps it's not the best idea. I haven't really compared the DPS, this is just what I found effective. Uh, using the Spiked Crack tier and the Axe Talisman, you do get a pretty hefty bonus to your R2 damage. It's not necessary though if you're only going for bleed. It kind of depends on if you want more bleed or more damage. It's also very interesting some of these new consumables that they provided in the DLC. For example, I I'm using Sacred Bloody Flesh for this build. And so what that does is it boosts my Arcane by 10 and it will boost my damage by 7%, just across the board. With the 10 Arcane, we'll actually have a bit higher damage and it'll move up to 214 bleed because we had a 57 Arcane. And then if we get a bleed proc off, which we absolutely should be able to doing 430 bleed a hit, we get a secondary buff that's 18%, again, to all damage. So that also stacks with Lord of Blood's Excitation and White Mask. So just from proccing blood loss, we're getting an additional 50% more damage. That's as high as using Millicent's Prosthesis and Rottenwing Sword Xenia and Thorny Crack Tier on a multi-hit build, which is insane. Definitely want to spec into bleed with this. It, there's really no reason not to. And I think that's intentional on FromSoft's part. Now as for the stats, I am level 125, of course. That is the metal level, and that is the most optimized level to make a build around. If you want to go into the DLC higher level, you absolutely can, nothing stopping you. You would want to get AD strength or 54 if you're going to two hand, and then 60 arcane. Outside of that, the stats don't matter too much. Even saying if you want to go up to 150, I don't really see much of a difference in the potency of this build because most of your damage is going to come from the Skadu Tree Blessings and getting those Blessings up higher is going to increase your damage more than a few points. And then so we have 20 Endurance, that's just so we can medium roll with our armor and the weapon. Then we have 42 strength, and this gets us to 63 when we two hand. It's not reaching any soft caps necessarily, we're not stopping anywhere in particular, it's just that is the optimal damage that we can get from this weapon. This is split with arcane, so it's going to be a little bit wonky. We have 11 dexterity just for the stat requirement for the Blood Fiend's arm. And then, as I said, we have 47 arcane, which will be boosted to 57. Again, not a soft cap, however, this is just the way that the optimal stats work out to be. As for the weapon itself, obviously we want to run blood, that gives us bleed, which is the primary point of this build. And then I put on Craigblade, you could do any other manner of Ashes of War, such as Braggart's Roar. You could do Lion's Claw, Savage Lion's Claw if you wanted to go into 
the Ash of War instead of the Charge Shard 2, although you would be losing a lot of bleed. You could also do something like Royal Knight's Resolve, and that will boost your damage a lot more, but you would have to apply it every hit. And with something as slow as the Blood Fiend's Arm, you're not necessarily going to be able to get off a Charged R2, or even a regular R2, as well as having Royal Knight's Resolve. Now for the Talismans, this is a pretty vanilla Talisman setup, although we are going to use the Two-Handed Sword Talisman to boost our damage even further. So we have the Axe Talisman, which boosts our charge attack damage by 10%. The Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which boosts our attack power by 20% when blood loss is procced nearby. And then we have the Great Jar's Arsenal. This is just cutting down on endurance. You could put something else here if you were, say, going to level 150 and wanted a little bit more damage. And the Two-Handed Sword Talisman increases our attack power by 15% when we're two-handing weapons. So that's really good, and it kind of unbalances the two-hand versus one-hand, especially with a strength build, because at this point you would always want to do two-hand, because you have higher motion values and you're also getting more attack power. And then for the armor, we have the White Mask, which is a staple for bleed builds. It is going to give us 10% attack power when bleed is proc nearby. Then we have the Rakasha armor, and that's going to give us 2% attack power for each piece that we have equipped, but it's also going to reduce our absorption by 2%. So we're going to do the armor, the gauntlets, and the greaves, and that's going to give us 54 poise, which is above the 51 poise breakpoint. And then for the crystal tiers, this is a, another thing that's going to be changed by the DLC. The meta crystal tiers are now looking to be blood sucking crystal tier and then whatever damage tier you have. And so what the blood sucking crystal tier does, it increases your attack power by 20%, but it drains your health by 20 points every second. That sounds pretty extreme, but it's actually not. If you really are concerned with taking damage from that, you can always offset it with a bestial vitality or any other of those faith region health spells. However, it's really not necessary and it really functions as a power within where the attack bonus from it that you get is far, far outweighed by the health lost. And then for the other crystal tier, we have the spiked crystal tier, which gives us 15% attack power for charged attacks. With all that combined, excluding the Sacred Bloody Flesh, just in case you don't want to farm that. You're going to have an attack rating of 1714. So plugging this into a damage calculator, taking the average damage negation for bosses, specifically Remembrance bosses, we're looking at a charged R2 output of 7439 per R2. This is factoring all of the buffs that we have active, but that is a very, very good damage output per hit, obviously. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a comment. Feel free to join my Discord if you have build suggestions that I should try out, or if you want to join an active Elden Ring community with knowledgeable players. Yo, know, thinking about it, I imagine Syrope's gonna make a video and claim to invent the sacred bloody flesh, just like he did with the self-poisoned rope pots, which is just absurd, right? You don't invent a strategy. People will develop strategies on their own